Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Touch, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use columns with CSS3. Now we can take paragraph context and have it be split up into multiple columns based on parameters we specify. That way creating sort of more of like a newspaper style layout that we can use with our CSS columns. Now the cool part is, is the fallback is just going to be in one big column. So it's really, if you approach this from a progressive enhancement point of view, uh, the browsers that support multiple columns are going to be getting these nice columns, the people who aren't just going to be getting a little bit wider text. Now you could also target this with something like Modernizer, but we're not going to get into that in this video. We're just going to show you how to use columns with CSS3. So let's get started right now. So what we have here is just two paragraphs. Basically, we just have um, a one paragraph tag with some text, another paragraph tag with some text, and it looks like standard paragraphs. Now, what we want to do is turn both of these paragraphs into columns. So we could just say P and now in our CSS, what we want to do is define how many columns we want and how big the gap between those columns should be. Now we could also define the width of the column, but to be honest, if you're calculating the distance they are apart, and if you're calculating how many there are, it seems like you don't really need to ever say they need to be this many pixels wide. Uh, they'll just fill to the width of your parent container, which is something that would be useful in a situation where your container is growing or shrinking. So let's go ahead and add some columns. What we can do is the property is column hyphen count. And this is going to be, let's just start off with two. And you notice instantly, uh, we have both of these paragraphs are split into two columns. And now it's nice because they're of equal height. What's really cool about this is no matter how big the viewport is, we're going to maintain those two columns and it's just going to uh, flow the content into the next column over. Uh, which is just great, which is something that a couple years ago just was a, a dream in CSS. Okay, so now how can we determine the gap between them or the gutter space? Well, we could always say column hyphen gap. Now for the column gap, we're going to use a pixel value to just say, we're gonna want our columns to be 40 pixels apart. And you can see they instantly get pushed apart a bit. Now what happens if we just mess around, we can say we want this to be four columns, maybe with a 10 pixel gap like that. So you can see you can create some really nice, uh, almost like newspaper like layouts. And in fact, if you were to just have one paragraph at two columns, um, it would be really great. And in fact, the fallback is almost as if we didn't have any columns at all. So if, if we didn't have the proper browser that could actually read these tags, which you'll find out in a moment, isn't a ton of browsers, but there is hope. Uh, if we comment this out, this is what those users are going to see, which isn't maybe different than what they were already seeing before. So here we have our four columns with a 10 column gap. Now, what else can we actually define? Well, we can say that there's actually a border in between each of these columns. Let's give this some more space. Let's do 40 pixels at two columns again. And let's add a column rule. So we can say column hyphen rule. And the rule is sort of just like a border in between the columns. Now this is defined the same way that you would with a border. So you can say we want it to be one pixel, we want it to be solid, and we want it to be, um, let's say, 00, zero FF00, zero zero, which is gonna be an ugly green color. Actually, let's do a different one. We can do a little bit more bold, this dark blue, this super ugly blue. Okay, so now we have this line in between and you'll notice that it's halfway in between our columns. If we make this smaller, it's obviously going to uh, maintain the distance. And this is really great because we have the same options that you would if you were doing a border. So we could say like dashed at four pixels and then we have a dashed rule in between here. You can even specify these parameters individually. So you could say column hyphen rule hyphen color and then just say red. And you can see that's overriding of course. So there's, it's just like border. We have color, style and width uh, for those. So column 
hyphen rule hyphen style and column hyphen rule hyphen width. Now let's get into the important stuff. How and when can you use CSS columns? Well, what you don't see in this example here is that I am using a CSS auto prefixer uh, with code pen here. Auto prefixer, make sure you have all of your browser prefixes. So because of that, I don't have uh, these browser prefixes, but for this to work in modern browsers, even Chrome and Firefox, you are going to need the Moz and the uh, WebKit uh, browser prefixes for this to work. So let's take a look at can I use. If you're not using caniuse.com, you should. Uh, Level Up Touch has no affiliation with can I use, but it's a great website for knowing what browsers support what in a nice visual way. As you can see here, even the latest version of Firefox along with Chrome and Safari and Opera all only support CSS column with their prefixes along with iOS, Android, and Chrome for Android. Now Opera Mini supports CSS columns along with Internet Explorer 11 and 10. However, you'll notice that with nine and eight, it's not supported at all. So that means no matter what browser prefix you have, you're not gonna get it to work in IE8 or IE9. However, there is a JavaScript uh, fallback that you can use. However, I personally would just let them have the one column version of whatever you're doing. Unless that multiple columns is really essential to your design, the 2.4% uh, the and the 3.7% of these users just might have to suffer with their content being in one column. It just doesn't make a ton of sense to have that much overhead just so that small group of users has the same visual experience when really it's probably not affecting your content at all. So this is CSS columns. In the next video, we're gonna show you how to use CSS columns with unordered lists and ordered lists and some things that you might not have thought about with what that means. So check it out, let us know what you're thinking, go to CodePen, mess around with this yourself, or just use this in your projects. Uh, CSS columns is awesome. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video, or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tuts. We love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.